What's up everyone, welcome to Audio Architects. My name's Mike. If this is your first time here, thanks for stopping by. And don't forget, if you do enjoy the content, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel because subscribing to smaller channels really helps us out. One by one, we can definitely, definitely grow. So what am I gonna be up to today? Today, I'm gonna show you guys how I built a hi-fi system by just going to Goodwill. Goodwill is an incredible place to find some really cool vintage treasures as well as some actual relevant you know present day you know hi-fi finds so come along with me on this journey and let's see what we can find what's going on everybody here at the local goodwill to see what we can find and see if we can uh pick up something really rad that we can use in the video let's go see what's going on so once you hit the electronics section, you're gonna to wanna to look right away for any name brands that you recognize. Also, there's brands out there that you may not recognize that you should be paying attention. So pull out your phone and just start Googling things that you're not familiar with or that look pretty cool. For example, this subwoofer, Polk Audio, $400 sub, 24 bucks, I picked it up. Uh, definitely look for vintage finds. Vintage is killer, as well as cables. I came up on some AudioQuest cables for this video just by going to Goodwill. Okay guys, so you bought your first piece of equipment from Goodwill. Now, what do you do? Well, you gotta clean it, you gotta check it out, you gotta test it. There's so many things you, you have to do. I mean, you definitely test it at the store. Because when you're at the store, uh, they usually have little electrical plugs somewhere. Plug it in, make sure it at least turns on. Because if it doesn't turn on, then it's trash and you just don't buy it. But if it turns on and it looks like it's working, and you, especially if it's an amplifier or some kind of AVR or receiver, make sure you hear that click when it comes on so that way you know, some, you know it's working, you know? So what I'm gonna show you is how I'm gonna clean and prepare this product. I'm gonna show you the Sony receiver we picked up at Goodwill the other day, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to get that sticky stuff off and all that other stuff and, and basically clean it up and see if it works. So here we go, check it out.
everyone. It's time to actually reveal what I put together for <laughs> this Goodwill uh, system. So let's start off with the subwoofer. The subwoofer I actually got really lucky with. It is the Shu VTF2 Mark IV, which actually is a pretty relevant subwoofer. Now, there was an issue with the receiver and the subwoofer because the receiver did not have a sub out. So check this out, this is how I hooked it up. All right guys, for those of you wondering what those high level inputs are for, I'm actually filming a video today that features this particular setup. So what this does is it allows you to run your uh, speaker cables from your old ass receiver, uh, <laughs> from your B, uh, speaker B's and uh, you're going to run your speaker A's to your regular speakers. Speaker B is going to be going directly into your high level inputs on your subwoofer. That way you can actually have some bass in your system. That's only if your receiver does not have a sub out. If it has a sub out, definitely use that. This is worst case scenario. This is last ditch effort. Or if you just have a vintage amplifier you'd like to use. So that's it. Okay, so now you know how I hooked it up. The receiver is actually a Sony STR DH100. Nothing really super special about it. Just a basic receiver. It actually, you know, plays pretty well. It has plenty of power. No, no complaints. I think it sounds just fine. However, it's not the, the greatest of, of finds that I possibly could have found. In the past, I have found, you know, vintage Marantz. I've found uh, Rotel. I found a, a lot of different types of really nice uh, components. However, for this video and the time frame, uh, this is what I was able to find and I like it. You know, I'm probably gonna use it as a, as a garage receiver or a test receiver or something. Uh, the only downfall is just, uh, it doesn't have five-way binding posts. It doesn't have a, a sub out. It doesn't have a lot of things that I need, kind of want and need from a receiver. However, if you're on a Goodwill hunt and this is what you got, this actually, the system actually sounds pretty cool. The speakers were actually the best find, uh, I think, because the speakers themselves, I only paid $49 for the pair. And they are the DefTech BP8040ST, which if you Google right now, are actually pretty damn good speakers. And finally, the CD player, which is our source. The CD player is a Sony SACD player, SCD CE595. Um, once again, not the greatest CD players out there, but does the job and it sounds pretty good. And it's an SACD player, so that's actually kind of a rare find. And to provide the power, I, was able to find, I know you can't see it in frame right now, but I was able to find a Panamax uh, surge protector, which is rad. You know, it's like an $80 surge protector. Got it for 10 bucks, or no, got it for five bucks. So in this clip ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and do the math for you and show you exactly what I spent and how much I would have spent if I would have bought this either on eBay or retail. Check it out. The receiver is a Sony STR-DH100, which sells for around $130 used. It's a two-channel audio receiver with 100 watts per channel. It offers A-B speaker switching for front speakers and tone control. It's a simple receiver that does its job very well. I only paid $19.99 for this unit. The CD player is the Sony SCD CE595, which can be found at prices ranging from 60 to upwards of 200, depending on its condition. It's a five disc CD Super Audio CD carousel changer. It features multi-channel analog audio outputs, which facilitate hookup with compatible audio video receivers and multi-channel amplifiers. It also has an optical digital output that could very well be used with an external DAC. I purchased it for $13.99. The subwoofer is the Shu VTF2 Mark IV, retailed for over $500 before being discontinued. Right now, you can find them between two to 300 on Facebook Marketplace and other selling platforms. It features a 12-inch down-firing subwoofer with a 1,000 watt amp. With its hybrid tuning capabilities, it is said to be able to go as low as 18 hertz without a problem. I will be following up with a review on this subwoofer featuring REW to support the claims by Shu, which after really listening to it, I feel I will have no problem achieving those 18 hertz. I paid $39.99 for this unit. It has a few scuffs, but actually came with the port plugs, so I was quite impressed. The speakers are the true find. They are the definitive technology BP8040ST, which sell for around $1,600 for the pair brand new. 
To be honest, they are in like new condition. They offer forward focused bipolar array technology for lifelike imaging and pinpoint localization. The balanced dual surround system driver technology places rubber surrounds on both the outer and inner edges of each speaker cone for improved clarity. Their frequency response is 25 to 30,000 Hertz with a sensitivity of 92 dB. The speaker itself has dual three and a half inch mids and a one inch pure aluminum dome tweeter in the front and a single three and a half inch mid and one inch aluminum dome tweeter in the back. It also has an eight inch woofer with dual eight inch passive radiators. I paid $40 for both speakers, making these the prize of the bunch. So let's math it out real quick. I got potentially $2,230 worth of gear for $114. Bucks. Don't sleep on Goodwill. All right, guys, and that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this. This is kind of a cool little journey that many of you can embark on. I think going to Goodwill, Salvation Army, um, garage sales, estate sales, anything like that, you're able to find some really cool either vintage or like i said very very relevant in today in today's hi-fi uh finds so i encourage you guys if even if you're even if you got your system set up as a, as a, it's just a gross hobby just go out there and look for stuff that's also a good way to make money uh, uh honestly if you flip this stuff you find it for cheap at these places flip it make some cash i know you know times are tough for a lot of us right now so that's a good opportunity to make a little bit of a extra additional income and create a a little income stream on the side either selling it on facebook marketplace or ebay or macquarie um but yeah yeah, thank you guys for watching and I wish you all the best. Oh, and one more thing. If you guys do go out there and find some cool stuff at Goodwill, post it up on Instagram or post it on Facebook, uh, post it in the fa my Facebook group. I'll put links in all the Facebook group stuff below so that way you guys can share with me what you guys find because I'm super interested. I do get a little jelly sometimes, but I am super interested in uh, what you guys find at these Goodwills and estate sales and stuff. So definitely share that with me and I'll definitely, you know, I'll post up the best pictures I could find from... Uh, from you guys. So thanks again, guys. Have a great week.